we're here at the old feed mill with Chef Andrew Pierce. And Chef Pierce, what are you going to show us today? We are going to be making fork tender pot roast illustrated on page 16 of the Wisconsin Local Foods Journal calendar for 2013. Very good. We start by getting the pan warming. Trusty chef's knife, carrot. You don't need to skin it, you just need to wash it real good. Actually, all the vitamins and nutrients are in the skin. Put it into a bowl. When you're braising something like this, it doesn't need to be exact. I'm gonna use two carrots, one large onion, and probably four ribs of celery. And when you say braise, what does that mean? It means that we're gonna cook something in the oven in liquid. Do the way of the onion here. The onion has several folds. You have to get through the folds. Then you can cut it right apart. Let's see. Maybe five. We'll save those parts for stock later. Uh, the recipe calls for butter, but I'm going to use half butter and half garlic infused olive oil just because I like it better. You can use any type of fat you like. Okay. We're just flavoring our oil here with our, what the French call mirepoix, which is the base. We've got our nice English chuck roast. Okay. You can use any type of meat with this, but the chuck roast has the right marbling for the flavor. And I'm gonna cut off a little bit of the fat, but you don't want to cut too much off because that in lies your flavor. Yeah. yeah, the vegetables you put in the bottom so the meat doesn't burn to the bottom of the pan while it's in the oven for four to five hours. Next step, a little bit of flour and all of our herbs and spices. We've got some kosher salt, some black pepper, some white pepper, a little bit different flavor, some granulated garlic, paprika, ground mustard seed, and our green herbs, some marjoram, some thyme leaves, I prefer whole, some oregano, some parsley, and one bay leaf. Goes in with the vegetables. <laughs> and uh, since I'm out of whole garlic cloves at the moment, I'm gonna use some of the garlic puree that we make here. Now we swirl this up a bit, get it all nice and incorporated, and we roll our meat in it until it's totally covered. So we're gonna turn our oil back up and we're gonna sear the meat in the oil. There's two ways to know when it's ready. It starts to pull away from the pan or you can throw a little flour in there and if the flour dances around, it's ready. Wanna let it brown up nice and, well, brown. We're gonna use this, so don't discard it. And when the, that side is brown, get all the edges. And we're gonna lay this meat right in the pan on the vegetables. Next, we're going to need a whisk and some of the flour that you uh, dusted the meat in. We wanna turn that off. All right, we're gonna turn our heat back on. Hit it with a little red wine. Let that incorporate. And we're gonna hit it with some beef stock. Now if you don't have time to boil the beef bones down, a bouillon will do fine. Now we've got to simmer it for a little bit. Cook out what I like to call the Russian money. The rubles. The rubles. I'm moving it around on the high heat so that it doesn't stick. Now we're at a boil. The roux is incorporated into the sauce. Pour it right over the top of this. We've got our bay leaf, our garlic, our mirepoix, our meat, and our gravy. Cover it with plastic and then foil. You need the plastic because if your meat touches the top, it has a chance of eating through the aluminum. The acid that's in this will 
come right through it. Cover it up real tight so it doesn't spill while it's braising in the oven. Here at the mill we use red skin potatoes for our potato mash. Once again, I would suggest using a pot holder. What a wonderful sight that is. We'll give it a couple of pieces of carrot. And in the bottom of the pan is your gravy. This one got a little thick. I must have used a little too much flour. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.